Hello again, everybody. This is Tom Jackson of CornBeltBaseball.com, and we are at Extra Innings in Bloomington, specifically in the uh, facility run by Dan Blewett. Uh, the uh, Dan Blewett and your sports performance. Sports yep. performance. Dan Blewett sports performance and the Warbird Throwing Academy. That is the new one here. You've actually been out here at Extra Innings for more than a year, is that correct? Or how long has it been? Yeah, I mean, since the beginning, we got open, uh, I guess, last October, you know, and uh, we were just lining things up prior to that. I got back into town, in, you know, 2010 in September. So, you know, I set up shop here, and I guess I officially incorporated in November. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is really my, start of my full first, well, I'm into my second full year, so. And yeah. you've expanded quite a bit. I know that you had uh, not nearly this much space out here. Now it runs the entire length of the uh, uh, the far north end of the facility here. Yeah, we started with uh, a thousand square feet, and uh, we now currently have 2,400. And that's just, you know, it's just supply and demand, I guess. I, I'm a little bit in demand, you know. I uh, I've been a good tenant here, so when Financially, my landlord, you know, Steve Eckhoff with Extra Innings was, you know, wondering if, hey, should we give Dan the extra space or should we, you know, keep it with the uh, the prior tenant? You know, it was, I'm like, hey, Steve, I'm going to, I'm going to take care of you as, as my landlord. So, you know, rent every month and mm -hmm. bringing people in. So it's, it's been good. So we got to expand and it's, it's a little crazy thinking about the humble beginnings we have. <laughs> I don't have enough photos, sadly, about it, but, you know, we start with a, just a cable machine dumbbells up to 50 pounds yeah. no barbells no plates uh, no squat racks no nothing just body weight stuff and yeah. did my best and look where we are now I guess so. you've got an amazing facility and uh, from what I've seen you're keeping pretty darn busy what kind of uh, athletes do you bring in here uh, right now I have about 40 uh, mostly baseball I also have softball volleyball golf let me think what else I guess that round that about rounds it off you know I have some adults mm -hmm. adults are not my forte uh, they're easy for me, but you know, really, I'm just focusing on my young athletes, and I've been growing. You know, last year at my peak, I had about 27. This year, at, in December, I was already in the, the mid 30s, upper 30s. So, you know, by that same peak point in February, I'm probably going to have 50, 60 kids in here, and believe me, that keeps me more than busy. So, yeah. I would certainly think so, because here it is almost 8 o'clock at night, and you're still here. Yeah. Just having wrapped up uh, your most recent uh, training session now. Um, one of the things folks uh, would probably really appreciate is the fact that, in a way, kind of like the hair club for men, you are your own best client here. I mean, you're not just some trainer. You're a professional baseball player as well, and you still are. I mean, that is yeah. what you do when you're not here. Yeah, I think I estimate to some people that 70% of my business is because I'm, I'm sort of cool and kids can relate to me, but... You know, I, I have, I've got two years of pro ball under my belt and, uh, you know, I'm still viable as an athlete. So, you know, and the, the Warbird Throwing Academy that was my new product this year yeah. was born on a bus, I think between Nebraska and Wichita. And it was me thinking, God, I've just pitched so badly this year <laughs> that if I can't be successful at 90 to 93, maybe I have to be, I have to, I, maybe I can only be successful at 95, 96. Or, or better I'm like so I'm just in the bus scribbling how how can I train myself better to throw harder how can I get more out of me if that's my only path mm -hmm. at it out of independent ball you know and I love playing independent ball it's been my my path but you know I want to get into affiliated ball and I want to get to the major league someday so you know that all that passion carries over here with my kids and they understand that I'm still chasing the dream I do workouts with them here and there and I do the throwing program I've been you know, two weeks ahead on the Warbird program and testing it out and seeing results in myself. And, you know, a lot of this stuff was just born for me starting when I was 18. Mm -hmm. How can I be better than I am? Because I don't want my career to end, you know, and that's, I think all these kids identify with that because all of us, we just want to keep playing and enjoy this game. And it's done a lot for me. And it's, I'm trying to kind of give back to these guys and hopefully they don't make the same pitfalls that I did, you know. Able to uh, kind of ride, stand on the shoulders of this uh, gentleman here who has <laughs> turned himself into a, a, an amazing uh, professional pitcher. I mean, that's the thing, and we've covered this before in, uh, in our uh, cornball sessions, our cornball interviews with you. You actually weren't much 
more than an above average thrower coming out of high school, you turned yourself into a professional, a guy who throws over 90 miles an hour, you know, well into the 90s here. Yeah, I mean, when I was a senior in high school, I was 70 to 81, and that velocity was the same until really my first season in college. You know, by the end of my freshman year, I was in 83 to 85, maybe touching 86. So, but over the next couple of years, I got some boosts, and every year, I, you know, one to three miles per hour, and it was always as a result of maybe an injury or just talking to new people, just working harder, you know, covering one more of my bases, whether it was yeah. nutrition, getting better at strength training, then getting better at flexibility, you know, conditioning, all those things over the years, you know, new arm exercises, just talking to new doctors, you know, when I got Tommy John surgery in 08, I got a chance to kind of remake my mechanics, and they were good at that point, but I, there were some little things that I wanted to change that I couldn't change when I was in competition mode, you know, you're playing all fall, all spring, all summer, it's hard to really make big changes. Mm -hmm. You need that downtime, and so I made the most of Tommy John surgery. And you know, it's over the years, yeah, I've gained you know about 15 miles per hour in the last you know since I was 18, about eight years. But most of that came in about a four-year lump. So yeah. you know, I'm still, and I think you know, my dad's an engineer. He's he's real big into the biomechanics of pitching. We talk a lot, and you know, we both think that I'm on the right track to hopefully kind of buck the trend and still gain velocity into my mid-20s because Absolutely. most guys are done gaining when they're 20, 21, you know. Once they've kind of hit that final maturity stage towards the end of college, they're usually done gaining velocity. But I feel like I'm kind of pioneering a new way where I can still get more out of my body. So, And it's each one of these experiences that you've had uh, that you've been able to build on all of the... Uh, the unfortunate situations, the Tommy John, the need to re-evaluate and kind of revamp your mechanics. Um, pitching in a game last year in which you saw a guy hit a ball, what was it, 40 feet above the 420 sign out. I remember you talking about that. And, and But it's all stuff that goes right in here, and that's what you're applying right here at Warbird Throwing Academy. Is that correct? I mean, you're taking that knowledge, that, that vast knowledge you've got, and your own personal experience and your own success, turning that into a pretty nice uh, new operation here. Yeah, I mean, you know, when I was with the Corn Belters in the Frontier League, that's a young league. I just, I would just throw the ball by guys. I threw one game, I threw 104 pitches total. Yeah. 96 were fastballs, and that was a testament to my fastball that it was good. You know, I'd sit at 91, and it just gets a little, little bit of late life to it. Yeah. But that doesn't happen with guys who've been around. <laughs> and that, that story, you know, to which you're referring was in Edmonton, the guy who was a for former first round pick, played five or six years in the bigs. Yeah. I was behind the count, 2-1, threw a pitch. It wasn't the worst pitch I've thrown in my life. I've thrown worse, but maybe outer third, mid thigh, and he just freaking tattooed it. And I was just like, <laughs> did that just happen? I, I turned back to look at it and I'm like, <laughs> and once I picked up, I'm like, why are you looking at that? That thing is so <laughs> far out of here. Like, look somewhere else. That thing is just gone. Like, that was, a, I, I mean, in Edmonton, it's 420 yeah. to center, and there's a 30-foot wall. And when we were, we just got into town, I, I was jogging some poles, and yeah. I made a joke to one of the other pitchers. I'm like, what, are home runs to center illegal in Canada? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they're not. The exchange rate is Apparently a little different not. up there as it is in the United States. Yeah, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just you run into that point, unless you're, you know, like Tim, Lim Tim, Lim Tim Lincecum, where you just cruise through every level you've yeah. been at. Most guys, they run into a roadblock so sooner or later, whether it's with their stuff, whether it's with their experience. For me, it's been experience. You know, I've, I've had good stuff, mm -hmm. and now I have to learn to pitch because there's, you know, guys who've been around, they, you can't get three fastballs by them. You know, you yeah. can get maybe one, maybe two, depending on the pitch sequence you throw, but they're not going to just, they're not going to watch 492s go by without just annihilating one of them. So, and that's fine. That's a learning, it's a lesson. I didn't expect to be a big leaguer last year because I'm not, you know, I'm still learning the game, learning how to pitch. And so when you hit those roadblocks, you can either just throw your hands up and collapse and say, man, I'm just not good enough. I should just go home. Or you can just think about what you've done and bounce it off the older guys who've been around. And they'll tell you, like, listen, man, you, you got good stuff. You just made a bad pitch. This is what this, these guys who've been around do. You know, you, here's a better way to throw them. You know, this is what you could have done maybe in that situation. And maybe he still gets you. But you just learn. You talk to guys who've been around. That was the nice thing about playing in older leagues with Lake County and Fargo. A lot of double-A, triple-A guys who just – and they're, they're always super gracious, you know, ready yeah. to help young guys and, and teach a little bit. So, Which is something you're bringing on here. So um, what would be one thing that you would uh, give as a tip, just to kind of give a little teaser for the uh, 
the Warbird Throwing Academy, since that's the newest thing. You got a guy who wants to come out here, learn to pitch better. What what is the first thing you look for in a kid? First thing, you know, is consistent mechanics, consistent downward release point. You know, you can't be out here pushing everything. Everything should be up at a crisp downward angle, out in front release point. That's the biggest thing. If you can't master that, then we don't need to do other things, you know, with the weighted balls, underweight balls, the different techniques to get velocity. We just need to get your mechanics down first. So if you have that, some of the stuff we've been doing with weighted balls, you know, underweight balls, softballs, medicine balls, you know, they're, they're telling me about each pitcher. Some guys have, can throw an 8-ounce ball as hard as a 5-ounce ball. You say, why? And so we get some of those guys throwing lighter balls. Mm -hmm. We've had success with the softball players that we have because their arms are used to throwing a heavier ball, you know, and it's just, I'm categorizing pitchers and throwers, not just pitchers. It's, you know, mm -hmm. I have infielders, I have catchers, I have outfielders, I have pitchers. I'm categorizing throwers into their sort of type, you know. Yeah. We have some big, strong, slow guys. We have some short, fast, but weak guys. And so mm -hmm. then we tailor their weighted ball program to that. And, uh, you know, we've been having good success so far. Average gains probably been three miles per hour yeah. over the three months. And got some guys who are as high as six. And I've had, you know, one kid we tested today who is, he's averaged, well, he's come up four miles per hour in the last two weeks. So overall, the, you know, the results have been good. And it's, yeah. it's, it's still a little bit experimental. But all the arms are healthy. No one's hurt. You know, we're doing well. And everyone's just getting better. So I'm excited about it. Are you to the point where you're going to get this tattooed on your chest yet? <laughs> or we still got a little ways to go? I told my kids if I touch 96 this year, I'll, I'll get the Warbird. Excellent. Well, I will attest. To my, to my epidermis. I will so. attest this guy knows what he's talking about turned me into a halfway decent thrower in baseball as a catcher. I want to thank you for that. Again, I want to thank uh, Dan Appreciate Blewett it, out here at Extra Innings. And uh, come on out and see this guy. He will help you out whatever sport you're trying to get in shape for. Again, for CornBeltBaseball.com, this is Dan Blewett, and I am Tom Jackson. Thank you very much.